Hi, welcome to another Word on a Wednesday. really made sense today to pick my word from the book of Hebrews. If you happen not to have been or to have watched Sunday morning's sermon from this past week, we started a brand new series in Hebrews. It's 13 chapters long. We'll take 13 weeks, the entire summer, to go through it. So last week was chapter one. This week would be chapter two. And our challenge to you is read that chapter. Again, this week would be chapter two. Every day of this week, more or less. As you read it, look for one verse that really stands out. And then in that verse, ask yourself, is there one word that really speaks to me? And what challenge might scripture be challenging me to do because of this word and this verse that's in this chapter? Another fun exercise might be to see if you pick the word that the pastor who preaches that week picks. Uh, I'm all for one. Uh, Chase did chapter one last week and he picked the word angels. Chapter one certainly is a lot about angels and comparing Jesus to them. Uh, and it was interesting that angels appear all through scripture, but we usually preach about the person they appear to, not the angels themselves. So it's pretty interesting. If you missed it by chance, go back and, and watch that one. But my word for chapter one would have been radiates. Uh, radiate is like to move evenly out from the center. You know, picture a campfire or a little electric heater down in your basement. Radiate comes from verse three. It says this, the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Uh, easy three point sermon there. Uh, he uh, radiates God's glory uh, he expresses the very character of God, and he sustains everything by the power of his command. But not time for three-point sermon today, so let's just think radiates. That heat, or literally light, that changes everything around it when you flip that switch. So here's three light verses to think about. First one's in John 8, chapter 12, and Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you'll have the light that leads to life. He said he is such a light in a dark, nasty old world that if you follow him, it leads to life. In John 10, 10, he said that's life in all its fullness. It compares to nothing else. So we can follow him for moral insight, one of the definitions of that light, uh, for understanding our crazy world, or for direction in making it through this world. Verse two though, from Matthew chapter five, cranks it up a notch. He tells his listeners, you are the light of the world. He already said he was, and we can believe that his truth can make a difference in our world. But now he says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then hides it under a basket. Instead, a lamp they place on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. The sun radiates God's glory. We let our light shine in such a way that everyone praises or gives glory to God. They say, well, God really has changed your life. They did that because they're just trying to follow the directions that God gives. We can make a huge difference in our world. Paul picks it up, last one, verse three. Uh, this is from Philippians chapter two. And do everything without complaining or arguing. That's a whole other sermon. We'll just have to let it speak for itself. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights. Another translation says shining like stars. Shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. What an opportunity we have uh, to not be criticized because we're always arguing and complaining about everything and, and with everybody. But instead, we're living clean, innocent lives living the life Jesus' light leads us to, and shining like bright lights ourselves, uh, or like bright stars. 
As someone, it'd be cool to, to name a church River's Edge Planetarium. Not where everyone is a star, but where we shine like stars. There's my word. There's a challenge. Go read chapter two. See you Sunday.